so what is the narrative that we are that is so obviously uh, suicidal, ecocidal, and and collapsing? What is it? And um, the relatively simple answer that I've come up with is that we uh, may have come up, we may have come to America or come to the American dream or the business as usual human operating system with some sort of family narrative, if we were lucky, maybe a cultural narrative from wherever we grew up or our, our lineages. But I say that in order to work it out at, in America, which represents kind of the pinnacle of the business as usual paradigm, that we uh, really had no choice but to adopt the corporate charter as our core narrative. And uh, the corporate charter has but one you know, legal responsibility. It, by law, the, the, the folks that run that corporation, uh, their, jo their job is to provide profit for their shareholders, period. And there cannot be, there cannot be, that it's not legally possible for them to have a, uh, any sort of uh, predominant attention on their impact on communities or on nature or ecosystem. They, they just cannot do it. That's what we've got in our running through our bloodstream on an individual level as well as a collective level. So built into that is all the stuff that Mike talks about so beautifully in his book on privilege and so many of the other folks that you and I both interview. It's all built in there. So what helps me with that is it's not some vague thing about, so we're talking about some narrative or some core story, but very few people talk about, so what is that core story? It helps me a lot to have that rather simplistic um, possible interpretation set up as a cornerstone for the conversation. The other cornerstone I'd like to mention and, and hand it back to you to see if it sparks you at all is um, that uh, the really the uh, promise of this business as usual paradigm is that uh, if you want to um, reap any of the benefits of the business as usual paradigm, which is obviously the fossil fuel extravaganza that that's causing it all, that um, the the one ground rule at the center of it is you've got to disconnect from the primary sources of meaning in human life. I don't know if that conveyed to you in in the impossible conversation, but I, you know I'm really deepening that distinction in this book and workbook where you know it it appears to me that in order to be functional as a part of the corporate charter as core narrative, I've got to literally cut off my inner sensitivities to my deeper self, to intimate relationship with other people of any kind, and then also with earth. Some would add a fourth one of, of soul, you know, so that, but you get the idea. I'm asserting that that is our, that the corporate charter or some variation of it is the core narrative that we've all adopted. And the ground rule to be able to, to enjoy some of the perks of our world is to cut off, to disconnect from those core sources of meaning in life. The last cornerstone, and then I'm gonna see what you think, is uh, that disconnection leaves us with immense blind spots in every dimension of our life. So while we're you know, celebrating being such geniuses and we've created such amazing things and this human extravaganza, um, I would assert that we are um, not nearly as present as we think we are in each of those dimensions that we basically have no relationship, no formidable relationship with our deeper selves, with each other and with the earth. And with those huge blind spots, the, what 
fills in that hole is addiction. You know, I was just listening to this uh, a gorgeous podcast the other day from uh, uh, Gabor Mate was talking about. He's a, a remarkable expert in the field of addiction. And it, it's like he was just reading straight out of the, the next chapters of my book. It was just phenomenal. I, I so appreciate his, uh, his take on what has addicts be addicts. And what I'm asserting is the the business as usual paradigm is an addict and all of us immersed in it are addicts. So let me stop and just see if that sparks. Yeah, no, I think what you addressed is, is really poignant. It's really important to, to understand those levels that you, you talk about because I don't know, there's a lot of things that come to mind. There was, there was one, actually, I just read, speaking of the thing I, I was looking at today, there's a article that I read I was shared by a guy I've, I featured on the podcast previously. His name is David O'Hara, and uh, he's a really amazing writer, and and he just does really. He's a, he teaches um, philosophy and classics at uh, Augustana University. But anyway, this, this article he shared it's uh, it's called "Can We Live in a World Without a Sabbath? Rethinking the Human in the Anthropocene." Really, quite a fascinating take on the creation story in the Bible and the and the role that the Sabbath has played in or lack of a Sabbath, I guess, this, this, this day that has been set apart every week in order for people to rest and let the land rest as well. Let the, let the beasts of the, you know, that are providing so much for, for human beings, let them rest on that day as well. And it's like also the seventh year, every seventh year, there's like a, another kind of year long, almost version of that. Um, and then they have their Jubilee, which of course is like a, almost like a, 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 a absolving all debts and, and things like that. So, but, but there was this one section of this that I really liked. Um, and it was actually a quote from someone named Deepesh Chakrabarti. And it was the mansion of modern freedom stands on an ever expanding base of fossil fuel use. And, you know, you don't think about that, but you think about this, this, this privilege that we have this notion that, Oh, well, everybody, our idea of freedom and being a free society is our ability to exploit the land, to exploit the so-called resources. And, you know, you talk about the sloppiness of our language. What better way to kind of detach us from the reality of what we're doing by calling a, a tar sand operation in Canada, which requires the absolute destruction of the boreal forest, the toxification of the soil and the land and the, the, the living beings of that land, in order for us to continue this addiction that you talked about in that third cornerstone, uh, that we call that development, we call that extraction, we call that all of these things, energy production, right? There's all of these words to obscure the very thing that we're actually doing, and it's all in economic terms. Right? 